Hello everybody, so we're going to carry on reading um, A Boy Called Bat by Elena K. Arnold. We left off where Bat wanted to go home to see the kit skunk, but is actually going to his dad's, so let's find out what happens. Chapter 11, Apartment 2A. Hi Sport, said Dad. Bat didn't like being called Sport because he didn't like playing sports or watching sports. Bat liked being called Bat because he liked playing with animals and reading about animals and watching videos about animals. But Bat didn't like calling him Bat. When he wasn't calling Bat Sport, he always called him Bixby Alexander. It's a great name, he liked to say. It's an okay name. Bat's first name, Bixby, had been his mum's last name before she got married. Now that she and Dad were divorced, she could have made it her last name again, but she kept Tam instead, because, as she said, I gave Bixby to you and you get to keep it. Bat's middle name, Alexander, was the same as his dad's middle name, and all four of them, Dad, Mum, Janie and Bat, were Tams, even though they didn't all live together in one house. The rain had turned into a gentle mist and Dad had his windshield wipers turned on to their lowest setting. You know what we need on a chilly day like this? Dad asked. What? Bat replied. Well, I was thinking that after we pick up your sister, we could all go to Coco's to get some hot chocolate. Do you like that idea? Coco's was the name of Bat's favourite coffee shop downtown. It was nestled in between a bookstore that also sold stuffed animals and a shoe store. OK, said Bat. They drove under a little bridge and through downtown. Because of the rain, fewer bicyclists crowded the streets and it didn't take Bat's dad very long to get to Janie's school. Bat recognised her right away. She was standing near the corner wearing her bright yellow rain slicker. Bat admired the way she looked, like a sh shiny yellow sun. Hi, Dad, said Janie. She tossed her bat back into the seat next to Bat and then slid into the front seat, slamming the door. Hello, my girl. How was your day? Bat relaxed into the back seat as Janie told Dad about her day. He didn't listen to the words that she was saying, but he liked the way her voice went up and down like music. Dad's voice was nice too. It was lower than Janie's and it didn't go up and down very much. It was like a straight line. At Coco's, Bat spilled some of his hot chocolate on his shirt when he took off the lid to add cinnamon. Be careful, sport, said Dad, which was a dumb thing to say, because the hot chocolate was already spilled, and being careful now it wouldn't unspill it. Bat couldn't enjoy the taste of his drink because the only thing he could think about was the wet, uncomfortable stain on his shirt. Dad's apartment was in a complex that had a pool and a workout room. Kids under 13 weren't allowed to use the workout equipment, which Bat thought was unfair. He really wanted to try the treadmill. The apartment was on the second floor. There was an elevator, but Bat preferred to take the stairs. He liked them because there were two sets of 11 stairs, and 11 was his favourite number. One day, he would be 11, which he felt like an exciting thing to be. At the top of the stairs, they turned right and walked around the corner. Then Dad unlocked the door of apartment 2A, and they all went inside. Home, sweet home, said Dad. It didn't feel like home, and it didn't smell sweet. It smells like onions in here, Janie said, wrinkling her nose. That's because the slow cooker made dinner for us, Bat said. Chilli. Bat didn't like chilli. Dad knew he didn't like it. Bat didn't like mushy foods, except for oatmeal with brown sugar. I don't like chilli, Bat said. Maybe you'll like it tonight, Dad answered. I tried a new recipe. Unless the new recipe was for a chilli that didn't include any chilli, Bat would not like it. Bat sighed and shrugged off his backpack. It was going to be a long weekend. Chapter 12. Finally. On Monday afternoon, after Miss Kiko rang the bell, Bat walked outside as fast as he could without running. Running was not allowed in school. Bat couldn't wait to go home to his very own room. He couldn't wait to see the baby kit again. He had called Mum every day to ask about the kit, and she had called him each night to tell him a story before he went to sleep. But now, finally, he would get to see the kit and smell its fur and feed it with a dropper, and maybe Mum would even let him name the kit. He had thought all weekend about a good name, and he thought he finally had the perfect one. He couldn't wait to tell Mum, but Mum's burgundy station wagon wasn't in line with waiting cars. Israel's mum was there, in her tall blue van, and Jenny Pearson's grandmother was there, in a little green bug. One by one, Bat watched his classmates climb into cars, blue cars, white cars, black cars, clean cars and dirty cars. No Mum car. Suddenly, Bat felt a hand on his shoulder. It was a man's hand with three silver fingers, Mr Grayson's hand. Your mum must be running late, huh, Bat? Asked Mr Grayson. Up close like this, Bat noticed a line of hard, short little hair just sprouting above the teacher's upper lip. Was Mr Grayson trying to grow a moustache? 
Mr. Grayson, Bert said, did you know that gorillas can catch human colds and other illnesses? Is that so? said Mr. Grayson. It is, said Bert. Sometimes when Bat was nervous about something like right now, when he was nervous about where his mother was and why she was late, he thought about interesting animal facts. Well, did you know, said Mr Grayson, that if you lift a kangaroo's tail off the ground, it can't hop? Yes, said Bat. Doesn't everybody know that? Mr Grayson laughed. The stubby little hairs above his lip bobbed up and down. Maybe so, he said. Bat considered whether he should tell Mr Grayson that his moustache looked a lot like a caterpillar. But just then, Mum pulled up in her burgundy wagon. She waved and honked her horn three friendly times. There she is, said Mr Grayson. I know, said Bat, I can see her. Mr Grayson sighed and rubbed his finger along his upper lip. OK, Bat, he said. Have a good afternoon. He waved at Bat's mum before walking across the parking lot to his own car. It was a little orange coupe. Usually dusty, but clean today because of the rain over the weekend. Bat opened the back door of the station wagon and climbed in, slipping out of his backpack before he shut the door. Hello, Bat, said Mum. Hello, said Bat. He buckled his seatbelt. You're late. I know, Mum said. I'm sorry, she turned around from the front seat to smile at him. I missed you, she said. Then she turned back around and started driving towards home. I missed you too, Bat said. Dad made chilli and wouldn't let me watch the Animal Channel because there was a basketball game and Janie was busy all weekend practising that song for a stupid play. Janie loved to sing and dance and act. And she was getting ready to audition for the role of Alice in Alice in Wonderland, her school's spring play. Is she getting good at the audition song? Mum asked. I don't know, Bat said. How's the baby Kit? Is he at home? Yes, said Mum. I've set up an enclosure for him in the living room. Like... Baby Kate's enclosure. Not that big, Mum said. As they turned the corner onto their street, Plum Lane, Bat saw Janie up ahead on the sidewalk. He could tell it was her by the way her dark brown ponytail swung side by side. Her hair was thick and straight like a horse's tail, which was why Bat liked it, even though she, he would never tell Janie. Chapter 13. What's in a name? The enclosure was nothing like Baby Kate's enclosure. It was just a dog kennel, a smallish one blue plastic with a handle on the top and a black grate door that locked, but inside Mum had made a nice nest out of old ripped up t-shirts. Did you use any of mine? asked Bat. I did, Mum said. I hope that's okay. It's better than okay, Bat answered. If the t-shirts still have my scent, then maybe the kit will bond with me. I don't think we could get your scent out of your t-shirts if we tried, Bat, said Janie. That's teasing, said Bat but he was peering into the enclosure and didn't feel very upset. Did you use any of mine, Mum? Janie asked. No, Mum said. Don't worry. I don't see him, Bat said. I don't see him anywhere. He's definitely in there, Bat, Mum said. The door was latched and everything, and he's still too little to walk anyway. His eyes aren't even open yet. Bat unlatched the door and stuck his hand inside. Yes, there was the kit, tiny and warm, wrapped in a fold of fabric. He's safe, Bat said. OK, Bat, Mum said. Latch up the cage and go wash your hands. Let's have a snack. At the table, Janie was smearing peanut butter on crackers. She got an out of a second butter knife for, for Bat. Bat loved peanut butter. He could never pack peanut butter sandwiches for school lunches because Lynn was allergic to peanuts. The entire sore wet school was a nut-free zone. Janie passed a roll of crackers to Bat. Mum had heated water in the kettle and poured out three cups of tea. Tea and crackers and peanut butter. Wonderful. I wonder if stripey will like peanut butter, he said, trying to be casual about the name. You know, when he's all grown up. Stripey, said Janie. Is that what you're calling the skunk? It's a good name, Bat said. It's a really good name. Skunks have stripes. I'm not sure it's a good idea to be naming the skunk, Mum said. She looked concerned with little wavy wrinkles across her squished up forehead. If you name him, it'll be too easy to get attached. And remember, he's only staying with us for a few weeks. Besides, said Janie, who says you get to name him? I'll bet I could come up with a way better name than Stripey. No, you couldn't, Bat said, stabbing his knife into the peanut butter jar. Stripey is the best name for a skunk. You always get to give things dumb, obvious names, Janie said. Bat felt sharp, hot tears in his eyes. Do not, he whispered. When you were four, you named your teddy bear Barry. And last year, when that stray cat kept coming into our yard, you named her P. 
patches. She was a calico, Bat said. Calicos look like they're covered in patches. Janie, said Mum, be nice. Ah, oh, Bat doesn't mind, do you, Bat? asked Janie. Of course Bat minded, but he didn't want Janie to know how much she'd hurt his feelings. Well, what would you name the kit? he asked. I don't know. Give me a minute to think about it. Janie munched on crackers and Mum sipped her tea, but Bat just waited to hear what Janie would come up with. He knew it wouldn't be as good as Stripey, and he couldn't wait to tell her so. I've got it, Janie said after a minute. Mum, he was born last Thursday, right? Mm-hmm, Mum said. And we want him to be big and strong. We're learning about mythology in school. I think we should name the skunk after the biggest, strongest Nordic god. We should name him Thor. Thor? asked Mum. The Thunder God, Janie said. It's perfect. See, because they used to celebrate Thor's Day, and now we call that Thursday. And that's when the skunk was born. Thor? Bat whispered. Sometimes Janie was annoying, sometimes she was a mean tease, but sometimes, Bat thought, she was brilliant. Ah, oh, that's nice. So we'll see what happens next with the episode of the skunk. Um, the next chapter is called Sleeping Arrangements, it's chapter 14. We're about halfway through the book now. Um, hopefully we get to finish it when we go back to school. Um, hope to see you all soon. Um, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.